Welcome to Beyond Our Focus. I'm Stefan, this is Amanda, and this is Let's Pull Ever about the drawing of the three. A Dark Tower book. The second in the Dark <laughs> Tower series. <laughs> Done by Stephen King. Today is January 14th, and today's chapter, or we're in part three, chapter two of the book. We are almost there, guys. We, we are almost there. We're so close to the end of this one. I mean, really, really so close. By Isn't what? That? By the, like the end of the month we'll be through this book? I believe Something so. Something like that? We're getting there. Yeah. We semi-talked about this last time. Don't remember a whole lot. <laughs> Things happened. I don't know. We're getting close there. Yeah. We, really, we, really close. Well, let's see. Chapter four is literally that long. Chapter four is the last chapter besides Final Shuffle. So I mean, we don't have much. Chapter two, chapter three, four, and shuffle. Yeah, it's gonna end like right at the end of the month. So it's good. I think so. <laughs> All right. So chapter two, the honeypot. Uh, the honeypot. 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 So we've arrived back on the other side of the door with yes. Eddie and Detta. Detta, evil, 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 <laughs> evil Detta. <laughs> Who is laying very, very calmly hidden in between some rocks. She is a snake. Oh, she is. So, like, it, it clearly says at some point that he walked right by her enough to where she could have grabbed him. And so mm -hmm. she's, she's an animal. She, she's crazy. Well, she's in the den of something else that used to live there. Yes. Because there's, like, little bones Bins. and stuff. She's right where she belongs. Yes, I she, believe so. She even feels like it. She's pretty much now. There was a bigger predator here, and at first, Detta thought she'd do pretty much what the previous tenant had done. So mm -hmm. pretty much, she she saw the bones, knew that some animal had been going out hunting, bringing their kills back, and she felt like she could do the same. But uh. <laughs> She she really does not like Roland. <laughs> no, no, because she's she's scared of Roland. Yeah, Roland, scary guy. And she admits in this that he the only he's he pretty darn smart for a honky. Oh yeah. So, um, let's see four notes. Um, the first note that I have is that last chapter we were talking about reasons as to why she doesn't kill Roland. And I had mentioned that maybe she does kind of understand the door won't work with Roland being dead. And yeah, it turns and she out. Very obviously yeah. mentions this in here. I yeah. don't know how she quite figured that out, but apparently she did. It said if the really bad man had no body to come back to, there would be no way Detta could get out of here and back to her own world. Could she make that really bad man take her back? Maybe not, but maybe so. But this is also kind of one of the reasons she doesn't kill Eddie. Or just tries the shooting. Yes. Because she's afraid if she killed Eddie, Roland might not come back because he won't have anything to come back to. Yes. She... Yeah, it's just... Nah. And she's not 100% sure of her gun and if it will work like she thinks it'll work. Yeah, she pretty much... It, it, she pretty much says, like, right after that, that she's she was deeply sly and she would pretty much laugh at anyone... Except she kind of, like you said, she understands the gunslingers pretty matched in intelligence with her. And that actually terrifies her. He's a smart man. Yes. He's a smart man. But she's giving him a little too much credit in this point. Because Roland not, did, didn't plan everything <laughs> she thinks he was trying to plan and trying to no. trick her. Roland just literally said, you know what, screw it, Eddie, here's the gun. Yeah. I'm going through because I have to. Well, that, but technically, in a way, it kind of does make sense what she's thinking about Roland as far as, at least up to this point, she saw him toss the gun to Eddie. Of course, he had shot the gun up in the air. Well, when he shot was when she woke up. Yes. So, and she couldn't hear them, so she only has a part of what's actually going on. Yeah. And it's only what she could see from her little rock. But it pretty much said that... She also knew what it was supposed to mean to her. 
For, of course, the really bad man had known she was watching. Even if she had been sleeping when the two of them started chinning, the shot would have awakened her. Stay away from him. He's packing iron. <laughs> but devils could be subtle. But the thing is, if she was confident in her gun and really wanted to kill Eddie, he'd be dead. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just plain and simple. She had her opportunity. So She could walk straight out, look <laughs> Eddie in the face. He still wouldn't shoot her, and she'd yeah. just kill him. Yeah, pretty much. But that also uh, comes to mind that she's also afraid to kill Eddie because she's all, she's afraid that if she kills him, somehow Roland will know. Yes, he'll know. And I kind of think he might. Yeah. I, I think in a way because as close as they are all connected, as close as the whole tower thing, the ka, everything, mm-hmm. I, I feel like content. if... Yes. I feel like if one of them dies, they feel it. Well, Roland would know. Yeah. No matter what, I, I don't have any doubt that <laughs> Roland would know and his deepest soul or whatever he, how he figures the things he figures out he would know so yes she goes into this huge inner dialogue about roland the really bad man whether the gun the gun shells were you know usable or not just has this huge inner conversation and how he is he's scheming all these things and it's just it's a, yeah like you said it's a little overboard but she she comes down. I I I nice try, nice try. I I know what's going on. She thinks herself a little slyer than she actually is. Yeah, she she overthought everything, and then when she came to a conclusion, she's like, "Because I thought all this stuff means I'm smarter." Exactly. Uh, I like the last line right before three, which is, "She didn't need to shoot Eddie. After all, she only needed to wait." Yes. Because she realizes Eddie is really tired. <laughs> really, yeah. really tired. And pretty much in uh, three, three starts out with the whole, her one fear was that the gunslinger would return before Eddie fell mm-hmm. asleep, but he was still gone. So, uh, of course, Eddie spent two hours looking for Odetta. How she hated the sound of that. Yes. I love that in a weird way, Odetta is trying to come back. Yeah, like... She's I, trying to take control of this body, but trying to get back to the forefront. Yes. Um, I, I wrote that too, like the logical the logical thinking, but the fir- what triggered it, though, was that Eddie was looking and looking, and when he finally gave up, he sat down in the sand... And then he kind of got closer to the wheelchair and put his hand on it. And he had this look. And for some reason, that just struck Detta and actually made her feel sorry. And then suddenly this inner voice is like... Whoa. So she, she can't let that happen. Detta is definitely stronger than Odetta. Yes. This sight brought a steely ache to Detta's throat. Pain bolted across her head from one side to the other like summer lightning, and she seemed to hear a voice calling, calling or demanding. No, you don't, she thought, having no idea who she was thinking or speaking to. No, you don't, not this time, not now, not now, maybe not ever again. And then we get to a bunch of dialogue about good old Eddie who just... (laughs) He just, he's trying so hard to stay awake. Yes, he really is. He's hes getting up. He's like just kind of stretching out. He sat down in the wheelchair. It was too comfortable. Had to get back down. He splashed, went down to the water, yeah. splashed water on his face. But Eddie is tired. Yeah. He's, he's too tired. He probably should have just stood the whole time. <laughs> then he don't even sit. I think after a while he would have just whoop. But maybe the fall would have broken him up. <laughs> but yeah, he, he eventually goes to sleep yes he just cannot help it but then something strange happens she starts having these logical thoughts like actually running over stuff that's going on like the first thing that happened was she she started feeling sympathy towards eddie Mm -hmm. and she's like he he looked like a little squirt who had tried to stay up until midnight on new year's eve and lost the race 
And then, of course, she ran that scenario of them waving poisoned meat at her and stuff. But then it's like, if they were scared you might die, why'd they try to get you to eat poison in the first place? And this question scared her the way that momentary feeling of pity had scared her. She wasn't used to questioning herself, and furthermore, the questioning voice in her mind didn't seem like her voice at all. And then she's like, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> she throws whatever little tiny bit of logic yeah. she can kind of get out of this. I mean, what are you meaning to kill me with that poison food? Just one to make me sick. So there was a laugh while they puked and moaned, while I puked and moaned, and I yeah. speck. So pretty much she waited 20 minutes, and then she starts her plan. Yeah, she wanted to wait longer, but knew she didn't have the time. I was afraid that Roland would be back any moment. <laughs> So she starts pretty much army crawling down the rocks and mm -hmm. with a chunk of rock. And you're like, oh great, someone's going to get brained. <laughs> what Detta planned to do was brutally simple. Smash Eddie with the jagged side of the rock until he was dead as the rock itself. She'd take the gun and wait for Roland to come back. But then she changed her mind about that. It looked like you had something. Yeah, there was something right here, but I'm not finding it as quickly as I wanted to. No. Mine was just that um, if the gun the really bad man had given Eddie didn't work, it was possible. She had never met a man she hated and feared as much as Roland, and she put no depth of slyness past him. She would do him just the same. She would do him with a rock or her bare hands. He was sick and shy two fingers to boot. She could take him. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Roland's it. Roland. There's ever anyone who was tough. I mean, Roland's it. I don't think she understands that Roland could literally be on his last leg and he just has those gunslinger instincts that like fight or flight and fight he would would just whip into place. He would beat the living daylights out of her and then die. Yes, yes. <laughs> it may kill him, <laughs> but he'd probably get her too. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh. Let's see. Oh, is it a, what if he knows? What if he knows what you did the second you kill Eddie? He ain't gonna know nothing. He'd be too busy getting his medicine. Getting himself laid, too, for all I know. The alien voice did not respond, but the seed of doubt had been planted. Yes. What if he knows? And then the, it continues on because it says, The really bad man needed to do something. She didn't know what it was. Had something to do with a tower was Aldetta knew. Could be the really bad man thought the tower is full of gold and jewels. Um, he said he needed her and Eddie and some other one to get there, and Detta guessed maybe he did. Why else would these doors be there? If it was magic and she killed Eddie, he might know. And then if she killed his way to the tower, she thought she might be killing the only thing Grey Meat was living for. And if he knew he had nothing to live for, he might do anything because he wouldn't give a bug turd for nothing no more. Yeah. Some good logical reasoning there. <laughs> and then, so, so pretty much she's, she kind of is just thinking all of this over as she's waiting there. Like She's a, trying to figure out what she needs to do exactly. Yes, because she's like, do I kill him? Do I let him live? What if he comes back? If they were both to wake up at the same time, could she take them? Like, she's coming up with all these things. And then she saw the pocket on the wheelchair. Yes, it had the twine or whatever it was that they yeah. had tied her up originally with. Looking at it, she understood how she could do everything. And that she did. Ugh. So, she pretty much, uh, let's see, the first thing she does is crawl, crawl towards Roland because of his purse. Yes, his purse. His purse. His purse. But she sees the door. She ganders in there. Um. I think she said, uh, didn't take him long to find out the gun, did it? I bet he never does. Yeah. You get moving, Dada Walker. 
Yeah, because the she has the same view that Eddie did when she sees it. She thinks of a TV show, mm-hmm. a crime show, and then uh, what she sees is some some druggist being held up. So that's where this is taking place is at a pharmacy, and we know that you can't hear. Apparently, you can't hear anything through the door. It's just noise and muffled and. I would say warbling, except that's used in a different way later on. <laughs> I like the line down here. After she starts, uh, once she opens Roland's purse <laughs> and starts yes. looking through it, it's like. But a closer look showed uh, showed you the traveler's gear of a man prepared for almost any contingency. Yes. It said she had had the idea of a really bad man had been on the road to this tower a good long time. If that was so, just the amount of stuff still left in here, poor as some of it was, was cause for amazement. Like, we almost got one heck of a curse over yeah. here. It's amazing what's in there. And the, she also realizes that if he's been on this journey for this long and he still has these supplies, one, it means he's resourceful, or two, it means he knows how to ration Hardcore. I think uh, both of those are very true. <laughs> she got what she needed and worked in her silent, snake-like way back to the wheelchair. Yep. The last one before five just says, He never stirred until Detta threw the noose around his neck and pulled it taut. Yay! <laughs> yeah. There you go, Eddie. You fell well, asleep. You fell asleep, and now you got a noose around your throat. Yes. You're not doing good. So he wakes up because he is being dragged backwards. Let's all remember that this woman has no legs. She's not in her wheelchair. She is dragging this dude. No. She, she's so much tougher than Eddie. Oh, yeah. She is so much tougher than Eddie. And, oh, my goodness. So much tougher than the, the ex-junkie over here. Yes. And he is, of course, getting strangled because it's tightening around his neck. And it's just, yeah, he, she yanked him hard with her strong arms. I, yeah. And the fight pursues. <laughs> well, it doesn't pursue for very long. Yeah. Because this noose really has Eddie. And oh, he yeah. cannot breathe. He can't get it undone. Yes, and so he has this inner dialogue with Roland. Because it says, the first thing he does is kind of... Mm, kind of like slyly tries to reach for the gun. Obviously, she's got that from you, dude. You've been sleeping. Yeah, she's not going to leave the gun on you. Yeah. She ain't that done. Um, She crept on you while you were asleep, Eddie. It was the gunslinger's voice, of course. It doesn't do any good to say I told you so now, but I told you so. This is what romance gets you. A noose around your neck and a crazy woman with two guns somewhere behind you. But if she was going to kill me, she already would have done it. She would have done it while I was asleep. And what is it you think she's going to do, Eddie? Hand you an all-expense-paid trip for two to Disney World? Of course. Of course. Then he makes the major mistake. Listen, he said, Odetta. Yeah, she was <laughs> not happy about Ooh. that. Yeah. Now, the word was barely out of his mouth before the noose pulled savagely tight again. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. You call me that again. I'm going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Uh, Don't piss her off too much. Yeah. She, she, she doesn't necessarily want to kill you right now. But if you pissed her off a little, she, she probably just I think, would. I think it's just like instinct. Like, not instinct, but... Uh, it almost just be like killing out of anger. <laughs> but... um. So, yeah, she, she pretty much says, you're going to say my name. Like, it's Detta. It's like, say it. Strangle. Okay, say it. Okay, it's it's Detta. It's Detta. <laughs> so, yeah. Then she tells him exactly what happened while he was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think pretty much what happens next is that... She pretty much explains to him that he's going to be putting his hands behind his back and he's going to be feeling for some rope that should he is going to be putting his wrists through. Mm-hmm. 
in that he uh, he he shouldn't try anything cute. And Eddie's like, I'm not feeling cute. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she, she says she's been braiding while he was asleep. Made those ropes extra thick. Oh, yeah. And she's getting crazier and crazier by the minute. It says, you, you'd better take a look around before you go doing anything rash. Eddie did. Detta looked more witch-like than ever. <laughs> a dirty, matted thing that would have struck fear into hearts much stouter than his own. The dress she had been wearing in Macy's when the gunslinger snatched her was now filthy and torn. She used the knife she had taken from the gunslinger's purse to slash her dress in two other pieces, creating makeshift holsters. The worn butts of the gunslinger's revolvers protruded from them. Her voice was muffled because the end of the rope was clenched in her teeth. She's tough. She's very tough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yep, and we finally get to where Eddie's finally realizing what he's being used for. Yes. We get a little dialogue from good old Henry... Oh, God. But when he was in the army, yes. and the opposing people would shoot one of their men, take them and drag them up, and just leave them alive screaming, and then pick off the people to come save, try to save them. Yep. And realize that's exactly what she was doing to Eddie. Yes. She has him hogtied now, because he put his wrist through, mm -hmm. and then put his legs through, and she dragged him all the way down to the beach. <laughs> And we all know what is at the yeah. beach. <laughs> they called him a honeypot, Henry had said. Sometimes sweet, uh, something to draw flies, or maybe even a bear. And in this case, good old Eddie is the honeypot. Yes. And he, of course, he's checking the tide, and he's looking up to see how long it is. And he's not worried about drowning. No, 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 no. There's something worse that happens. <laughs> yeah. Something else will happen way before he <laughs> drowns in the water that the high tide's going to bring. And when dark came, the lobstrosities would come rolling out of the waves. They would crawl their questioning way up the beach to where he lay helplessly. Trust, and then they would tear him apart. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Your book says no. No, apparently. So apparently, the, the, it just ends with him being hogtied at on this beach, and he's realizing his legs are gonna get super tired. Yeah, because this is a good old tie. His legs are tied in a manner that every time they lower or they come away from too far away from his butt, they pull the noose tighter yep. and strangle him. Yes. So he's in this extremely awkward position where he has to keep his legs up or strangle to death. Yes, so and he's pretty much going in this pattern where he'll lower them a little, not be able to breathe for a while, and then bring them back up so that he can get some air in. And it pretty much just ends with, there might come a time when he would simply be unable to bring his legs back up. So he's either going to strangle... Uh, 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 get strangled to death, get eaten by the lobsters, or drowned. All of these are possible. Yeah. All while good old Roland's in the door and Odetta, <laughs> or Detta is waiting. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. And yes, that was an extremely short chapter. Yes. As soon as I turned the page, like, oh crap, we're at the end. <laughs> Will Detta kill everybody? Will Roland come back and save them all? Will I wonder. Get There's only killed? seven books. I wonder what'll happen. You never know. You gotta never know. The rest of the seven books is just about Detta going to the Dark Tower. Yeah. Yeah. Shh, don't tell people oh. that. What's wrong with you? People will be smarter than everything. that. It's like you watch watching any series, like like Harry Potter series. Like <laughs> you're in the third the third movie and it's like I wonder, are you going to die? So you're like, well, there are seven. Oh, there are, there's eight movies. Hmm, I wonder if Harry's going to die. Well, then it turns into Ron Weasley and... <laughs> yeah, that's not quite how it works. This isn't Game of Thrones. <laughs> where you just kill off any main character at any point Ronald because... We Ronald Weasley and the Goblet of Fire. Or this isn't like The Walking Dead, where they've literally just killed off everyone. Yeah. Hermione Granger and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Mm-hmm. 
I don't know everyone's issue. Every time I hear someone talk about uh, the movies and stuff, everyone's always upset that Ron and Hermione got together. Hmm. I just, they just they and you just feel like Hermione should have gotten with Harry. Well, it's kind of it's just like when you see them in the first movie, it's like that's what it kind of leans towards, and everybody wants well, the main girl and the main well, that's guy. What it, is. it doesn't even necessarily lean that way. It's just that yes. Harry Potter is the star of the books, and Hermione's the lead female of the books. So of course they're supposed to get together, according to most fiction, most everything that how it normally goes. Yeah, I thought he was going to end up with like Cho, not Jenny, but it's not one of those like, oh my goodness, the books are horrible. No, I see. I'm actually quite happy they went a different route. Yeah. I'm happy that Hermione and Ron is yeah. actually the ones who got together. I'm like, well, that's that's awesome. See, I find that cute. I find that the fact that they were semi always butting heads throughout the entire <laughs> thing, showing their intelligence or not so intelligence <laughs> uh, towards each other, and then finally by the end of it, they're like, you know what? We're actually perfect. Like. But. Harry is kind of what brought them together yeah. and what kind of was the glue for the relationship. But they were all just good friends. Yeah. And she went more of that route. And something um, Robert brings up a lot. The scene in the seventh or eighth movie, I don't remember. It's not even in the books, but it was something they added, which was yeah. great, was the dance between Harry and Hermione. Yeah. The, more, the friendship dance. Yeah, I found that... I found that really sweet. I found it cute. Um, It's like, you're going through this horrible thing. You don't know if the people you love are dead or not. Your boyfriend just, you know, (laughs) disappeared. And so it's like, it's a way to be like, hey, let's try to remember the good times. Be happy that we're alive, that we're together still. We can go, we can do this and just kind of relax. And I mean, by the end of it, yes, it does turn into a, okay, I do realize that this is a horrible situation again. (laughs) But for that moment, they were happy. Yes. And, you know, again, it just showed how good friends Hermione and Harry were. Yeah. It's just, it's cool. It's a good series. Good series. Good series. (sighs) On that tangent, yeah. Let's go back to what we're supposed to be talking about, I think. (laughs) We had to bring in something happy, you know, now that Eddie's going to be eaten by a lobster. Yeah, I do thought they just get killed off any moment, so. (laughs) Okay. Which is very interesting how the Next part starts. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I, mean, I can't remember. Is the very the beginning of the next part? No, no it's, it's a little further on. It's a random slip that they just put in there. Yeah, which yeah. is like, well, that's nifty. Yeah. Finally, not the foreshadowing that they do so much. Of. Yes. They it's, even do it again. I think in the next chapter, it's like some foreshadowing of something. I wouldn't be surprised. They're just always foreshadowing. It's like, like you're, you're ruining stuff for the future. Literally foreshadowing is what made me take so long to read the seventh book. Because it just foreshadowed and foreshadowed and foreshadowed. And he was like, I can't do this. I will break my heart if I read this last one. <laughs> Terrible. I have to force it upon you. I have to force you to read the last book. Now we're finally getting through it again. Yes. Which is great. All right. Well, that's the end of this chapter. A very short chapter. A very short episode. Through some... Some extra filler in there with some Harry Potter. <laughs> oh, but the next one will be a lot longer. It's yes. a lot longer chapter. It's like three times the length. So, I think as always, you can reach me at Stars and Travel. You can reach Amanda at KZ Pup. Reach the show at Beyond Our Focus on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and podcast services. Check out the other stuff. Leave some likes. Th- subscribe to the channel. Which would be awesome. Leave comments. Subscribe to the channel. <laughs> we have people leaving comments, but nobody's subscribing to the channel. Let us know that you're out there. Subscribe. Tell people. Share. Share. Some interesting if analytics you... I looked at the other day on the, the, the channel itself is that the most amount of views we end up getting come first from Facebook. A lot of people That's are clicking right. a little from Facebook. Yeah. Interesting. It's not what I was expected. Oh, oh, that and that Black Mirror is by far the most popular thing at the moment. Well, Black Mirror is one of the more popular things that are out right now. Yeah. Um, and to... You know, how much time do people spend on Facebook? Obviously, people are going to click shit. Well, it's just nice to see that maybe... 
It's getting out there enough that people are actually doing some clickety clicks. <laughs> Somehow. Somewhere. If you like, like we said, if you like a video, even if it's just one video, it doesn't even have to be this video. But just <laughs> <laughs> somehow you made it to the end of this one and listening to this weird <laughs> spill at the end. But if you didn't like it, <laughs> um, but actually share it with people, like be like, hey, you should watch this. I think you'd be interested in it. Or I mean, just let us know and we'll be happy to share it with us. <laughs> <laughs> We get just random people posting our own videos. You guys need to watch this. <laughs> but I think we're good. I think it's good. We'll see you next week for... Oh, did you mention the name of the next one? I think it's called Roland, Roland Takes, takes his, his Medicine. Medicine. Yeah. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Roland Takes His Medicine. Drawing of 3. Part 3. Chapter 3. Yeah, lots of 3s. 3, 3, 3. Dun, dun, dun. Makes 9. So one nine nineteen. I don't know where the one comes from. Um, yeah. Anyway, till next time. Long days and pleasant nights. <laughs>